My name is John Craigie. I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm Lori Shook. I also live in Portland, Oregon, slash Idaho. And I'm Caitlin, and I recently moved back home to Sandpoint, Idaho. Home. Portland? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Portland is, it's changed a lot for sure, but I still love Portland. It's definitely a home, especially up in the Northeast. Feels like a small town, big city, and it's very home. Yeah, that's what drew us to move here in the first place 10, 13, 13 years ago, because it felt like a small town, big city, because we're small town gals and couldn't really commit to the huge city feel. But, um, feel teens to you, a big LA boy? Yeah, I live in Laurelhurst area. I like the music scene is broad and diverse, and I guess I'm more privy to one section of it, but I, I really like that, the scene here, and it does, it feels a little more collaborative and welcoming than other city scenes. Yeah, so. I agree. We all share <coughs> bandmates and stuff. It's yeah. Beautiful. We were drawn here because it was kind of the biggest city closest to home. Because we like mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> the best. We wanted to be able to just like, yeah, drive back and forth and I don't know, we had played couples just like two shows here before, I think, and just felt like we could be here. I don't get that feeling very often when I go to a new place because I'm we're just really hometown, rooted, very rooted in North Idaho, but when we get that feeling of, oh, I could live here, that's really rare, and we got that feeling really quickly from Portland and wanted a bigger music scene, and it just was like the obvious choice. It was, it was just very, that's the plan, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of roaming all over not living anywhere but these two were living here and I would stay there a lot and I like the scene and I like the nature proximity of nature and yeah. that's important to me yeah gotta I think, go to a waterfall in 45 minutes yeah most big cities don't have that mm -hmm. and I wanted that combination of <clears throat> enough people and enough buzz to where you could kind of do the things you needed to do as an artist but then also being able to get out and escape and didn't feel that crowded or didn't feel that um, claustrophobic. Yeah. And he got to, we, he found a place two blocks away from us when he first moved here. Yeah, that was awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Northeast. Friendship. Uh, we played a show together in Spokane, Washington in 2007. Seven? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, we've been 16 tight years. for a while. And what, that was the first, we just randomly got put on the bill together. Um, and uh, we saw it set and we're completely hooked. That was, yeah, Orange and Alert friends for and like, Belgian <laughs> bottle face. We didn't talk about those. <laughs> talk. But it got us. I mean, they were good yeah. enough. Yeah, it was good. It was, it good was pretty, it was pretty immediate. immediate. We all knew that, like, yeah, we're friends. <laughs> and yeah, it was sweet. Remember, we just had a quick hang after the show at that guy Patrick's house. Do you remember that? Oh, did very, we go to Yeah, that? very briefly. You guys ended up not, you weren't staying. I think you maybe just went home. But uh, I think we discussed wanting to do more stuff together. And then I think within a few months, you I was up in Sandpoint, yeah, yeah, and played a show there. It was really lovely. It definitely had to do with at least one of our songs when we wrote our song Time to Swim, like pretty soon after we moved here, cause, and it's based on just all the rain, and <laughs> about just it raining so much that it goes over the rooftops, and you have, you have to, to swim get everywhere. in a boat, yeah. <laughs> Caitlin, yeah, was, it was a rainy, wintry day, and Caitlin was in the bathtub, and I remember listening, hearing her, like, singing, like, opera, and coming up with this song. Sparked by the Portland rain. Yeah. Sure. There's a lot of influence in our songs about the, this, just the nature and we used to write a lot more nature-y based songs and, and then once we moved here it kind of like, it just expanded our realm of sounds and genres and stuff and we had so many amazing players join, join our come and go in the band and bring their influence and uh, so yeah, the city has definitely made us more of a just like a deeper sound, deeper groove. Deeper groove, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think those things and also it's definitely hip enough and cutting edge enough where kind of keeps me, I like to be as topical as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I've, on my upcoming record, there's a song that references like acupuncture and poly <laughs> and like legal edibles and stuff like that. And I don't know if I would have been as tune with, in tune with that if I was in a small town or something. So. Yeah. When I come home, it just gives me like, a, there's sort of like enough of the current zeitgeist to like get me uh, tapped in, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. And enough, and also like material for humor too. A lot of my jokes will come from that, you know, just being in this scene and all the unique characters, things like that. 
Uh, yeah, the past two summers uh, we, we played out at Topaz Farm on Savi Island, which was awesome. And that was a, a big outdoor show too, but they're not doing the big shows. So we're stoked to move it up a notch out mm -hmm. to here and make minimums it up. And yeah, we, Lori and I kind of got our whole kickstart in Portland at, a, at the White Eagle, like Miniman's White Eagle, and we had a, a monthly residency there, and that really just kind of like solidified our, our place in the folk scene in Portland, and had so much fun just holding down that night once a, once a month, and it kept growing and growing and growing, and so we, we're really thankful for McMinimans and how they've kind of helped people grow, and then and John's done one, several of our friends have done the, the yeah. residency at Al's Den, which is really cool, and like, yeah, so. I really like it. <laughs> I yeah, it's one of my favorite. I like playing outside, especially at night, because the nighttime is darkness is helpful for shows for sure to create the vibe and lighting. I'm obsessed with lighting, so as long as there can be lighting and dramaticness, then I'm into it. And I just love looking out at trees and and nature while I'm singing, because yeah, a lot of our songs lend to those visuals. And yeah, I think people enjoy being able to be sitting on grass and being outside. And I love it. I do too. There's there's pros and cons though. Sometimes it feels it just depends on the venue and how. But this this looks contained enough. Where mm. there, when there's a container for the energy of the crowd, like there is in a club, it like gets directed a lot easier at the stage, and so you can feel you can feel their their vibes a lot easier. And some sometimes in outside, if it's a really big space, just even if they're space. like soup, you you can you know you can tell that they're having a good time. But somehow the their whole energy just kind of evaporates a little bit and you can't it's not as much of a connection so um but this one yeah this definitely looks like it's it's a container yeah. for joy <laughs> and as long as there's not hula hoops you like it right yeah people i always look around myself people love it she's right people love being yeah. outdoors and listening to music it is a it's like a wonderful human experience and I, it's great i mean for me i think i'm very grateful to have shook twins and their band for this project because that's really what people want. I think they want a little bit. I really try to capture a lot of intimacy in my solo show, and also with the band. But it is harder to do outside. There are more distractions, and people do want to have more fun outside, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'd rather them have no fun at my show. I mean, I'm just, I'm kidding, of course. Focus. No, only but, focus. <clears throat> but yeah, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm. But yeah, for the summer, most of my stuff is outdoors. It really makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be celebrating like the weather and the like environment at that time and it's it is it is i'd like to joke about not liking it but it is a fun arc for me to go outside be challenged a bit more in, in trying to capture attention you can do it anywhere if you can, <clears throat> yeah if you can capture yeah. the festival crowd solo exactly he does it so then by september when i'm back in the dark gloomy room I'm, depression I'm not, I'm not much strong <laughs> i'm not much stronger yeah We're back. <laughs> yeah i recorded that in enterprise oregon at the ok theater and uh, it was a very uh, loose, like, quarantine record. <clears throat> we were doing a lot of, like, song construction as opposed to my normal just live takes. But um, we didn't quite have... Uh, it was a small group. I like to record with bigger groups, but because of lockdown and access, it was just a few, a few of my friends. And we were uh, definitely lacking on vocal... Um, texture and vocal like uh, beauty and so uh, this that's who I go to you know, for that <laughs> so yeah that was a little after the fact that we did that in Sandpoint yeah our listen. buddy Justin Landis has a little <clears throat> studio up there and we just worked it out in the shop and sang yeah I recorded initially in fall of 2020 no. yeah sorry yeah, it's, hard, it's hard to remember <laughs> yeah fall of 2020 and then uh, that came out um, last spring She's definitely a big influence. We, we grew up listening to her records. My dad's a huge Joni fan. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of the first real like folky queen that we got kind of hooked on, her and Ani DeFranco. Just poetic yeah. lyrics just gave us the idea like, oh yeah, music is poetry. Yeah. And yeah, I think Both Sides Now was one of the first songs we learned because our dad taught it to us, and, but in his shooky way, which we have, adop have adopted every <coughs> cover we do is very shookified. <laughs> but actually, the I think Case of You is like pretty the way she does it. But I don't know what made us choose that one just because we yeah, had we it had in the bag. We had just been doing it a lot at that time. We mm. recorded it a long time ago, yeah. about a year, 2018? It was 
a part of, yeah, we recorded it when we recorded our duo EP2, which was, yeah, I think 2017 or something, mm -hmm. and we just didn't release that release that one for, for whatever reason. We don't even remember why we didn't release it. Yeah, <laughs> and then I was like, we still have that, and I was looking up the date it was released and the anniversary, I was like, oh, let's just release it on the anniversary of 52nd Blue. anniversary. Yeah, the 52nd anniversary, you know, <laughs> standard, <laughs> you know. And your monumental. <laughs> yeah, monumental. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's such a beautiful song, and we love singing it. It's fun to add harmonies to it, too. It's like a little extra. Yeah. John got to be on side stage watching around Newport. Yeah, one funny thing, I'm trying to figure out how to make it funny. They're, they're releasing um, that Newport set. Oh, yeah. um, the cover of it is just jo a picture of Joni at, um, on stage then. But the back cover is a huge wide shot of the audience <clears throat> and my head ah. is very, very tiny on stage, uh, on stage right because um, that's where I was sitting. So I would like to make so a joke. on stage? Yeah, I was on the side stage watching. Oh. And so I'd like to make a joke somehow that's like, John Craigie appears on Joni Mitchell's new album. And then in parentheses, his tiny head. <laughs> in the back picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm trying to work on how to exactly phrase that. But it is funny to say that I appear on the album, um, yeah, technically like, speaking. Yeah. Just on the album. Yeah. yeah. On the album. <laughs> my, ro my royalties are huge. Yes. <clears throat> They're coming in. It's magical. It's, yeah, <clears throat> it's magical. Um, they probably don't know that it, 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 re it revealed its story to itself. Of, of itself to us later on, like two, three, two or three years after, or maybe t five years after we had it, because I was, there was a song at one point where I was tossing it up in the air, and this kid emailed us after the show in Seattle, and was like, oh my god, you have the golden egg, and he told us this whole story of how Cause he, he could and his see friends, his signature. <clears throat> he could see his signature, yeah. He and his friends had this egg and fell in love with it, and they started the signing at tradition and passing it on, and I just got some from some random guy, this guy, A.R. Moore, mm -hmm. in Seattle, and it's just been, it's just kind of like a symbol of, yeah, our twinhood, too, because we come from one egg, and we just officially found out from 23andMe that we're officially identical, <laughs> so we come from one golden egg, <laughs> and... And Laurie was the one that made it into an instrument, it was just a, yeah, like a decor, I, like an Easter pop, decoration. There's a popcorn size hole right here, and I, many and pieces of popcorn in here. It's very uh, hard to play. Yeah, it's a, it's cool. It's got a cool I I just love it. And yeah, it's a, it, it initially started to from this guy that uh, said that it grants wishes. So that's maybe also something some people don't know. It's a very powerful wish granter. Yeah. So if, when you sign it, you have to make a, a wish super hard. But we've had we've had people tell us stories Their like they, they touched it and made a wish on it mm -hmm. and like it's, it's like medical stories. Like yeah. I I wish that my my uh, like a, two times a baby was brought to full term yeah. through the wishes wow. on the egg and a got like some <clears throat> sort of surgery a gallbladder surgery or something <laughs> yeah. like people write us emails like it came true yeah <laughs> it's so cool yeah, yeah. she's magical uh-huh yeah it's, a, it's coming up on the new record too we just made one we went out to okay theater too and recorded a new album coming out soon with bart budwig mm -hmm. she's on there Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess I've known Steve a little bit longer. We're just in a very similar um, uh, genre yeah. of sort of like um, humorous storyteller, songwriter, and he's obviously a legend in his own right. So I'm, I've known him for a long time. Handmade Moments, it's also been a while, and I've collaborated them, with them more. I actually haven't done many collaborations with Steve, but uh, just hung out with him a lot and been, been with him. But. I've had Anna Moss in my band a bunch, Joel as well, and uh, yeah, just love them both. You know, love both projects. Steve and Hammond Moments amazing. And Steve is also managed <coughs> by our man manager. We, we three of us acts have have the same manager, so um, it's a little family. We met here. Steve what in like 2000? I don't know, 2013, I think, maybe before that at Folk Alliance. And we're just like, this guy, he's just so electric. Like, he's just. He's got the Riz. Yeah. The what? <laughs> the Riz. Oh, all right. It means yeah. short for charisma. That's, That's what all the kids yeah. are saying. Oh, <laughs> he's got the Riz. Yeah. TikTok. <laughs> yeah, he was very electric, and we just became friends immediately at that thing. And then we did a tour with him, our CD release show. He opened for us, and 
it was hilarious and amazing and just just brought so much energy to the show. Yeah, it's really hard to actually follow Steve Fultz because yes. yeah. he I just like, like <clears throat> brings you know the I... audience to the news, like crowd surfing, just a solo guy, and then you so go this up land and is your like, land. <laughs> yeah, and then we get up there with the whole band, we're just like, womp, womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we, but with John, we're gonna pump it up. We're yeah. gonna be able to follow <laughs> Fultz up. Yeah, following Hanmei Moments and Fultz it's is gonna, challenge, be, it's yeah. gonna challenge. be challenging. They're both Han- just like completely electric yeah. duo and s- solo acts that are Amazing. just like mind blowing. So we're so excited to. We met Hanmei Moments in our basement when Anna, Anna had. We had we have mutual friends with Rainbow Girls, and um, so Anna reached out to us because the Rainbow Girls said that she should, and she said she never does that. She doesn't like cold email people but she wanted to do a house show because Caitlin and I put on house shows and she just asked to do that and I was like oh this girl seems cool and I looked them up and I was like oh yeah these girls are great which that doesn't usually happen with I don't usually accept cold calls either I'm just like always just throwing shows with my friends and so randomly we're like yeah come on up and we met them in our basement and then we met that you guys met that night too yeah we all just met at the same time friends immediately it's one of those things for sure you just know when you know it's going to be a lot Lots. of collaboration, that's yeah. for sure. It'll be a very unique show, yeah. sorry to, um, yeah, in the sense that it's not often that these three pro- or four projects are together on one stage and uh, we all work, we have worked together in, in um, well, it's never happened at all four, so yeah. you'll get, if you're a fan of one, you're going to get a pretty unique show from all, and you'll, I'm sure you'll like all four of yeah. them. Yeah, <clears throat> that's always gonna, like how we like to do shows with friends. We just uh, we blend sets, and they'll sit in with us. We'll sit in with them. Like it's just, it just makes it so much more diverse. I don't know, cohesive and diverse to just like and you and you, if you like just one act, then you're just like oh they're not over. They'll they'll be bled into all the other sets. So it's like yeah, that's the kind of show I like to see. Yeah, and we've been doing those with John for so long. Like we have a annual show that we put on in. in Idaho too that he's been a part of for like 10 years and we just love absolutely love backing him up as a band I love being the band John and it's just almost so more than I like playing my own songs <laughs> stop it stop it, stop it. <laughs> no, it's a magical thing when that happens I think it always has been mm-hmm. yeah you're the best to collaborate with John Thank you. As, as are they yeah. yeah as a solo dude you're so good at having a band and Thank like you. collaborating and he's just very not attached to too many things not you're really good at having a band Thank for being you. a solo and act. Yeah, and usually when Craigie sits in with any band, he, they play one of his songs. Yes. It's like well, that's my joke, is yeah. like, I'm the worst person to have to sit in with, because normally, like, a shredder is just like, I'll just shred over your own stuff. For me, it's like, it's a jo- it's like a homework assignment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Craigie's going to sit in, so we got to learn one of his songs. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm the worst artist at large of all time. Yeah. I'm looking forward to our album coming out. I don't know when that's going to be, but in the process of mixing it and stuff right now, so I'm pumped about that. Yeah, I'll start dropping. I got a record coming out uh, in I think January, but I'll start dropping singles in the fall. I'm excited for that. New, new so songs good. on the horizon. So thank, good. Thank you. Yeah. We're gonna play some of those, right? Yeah, I hope yeah. so. <clears throat> yeah. I don't. Why we don't have one? We don't yet. have one yet. No. Mine's locked. <laughs> oh, it's locked. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Mystique, baby. Yeah. yeah, album names happen later for us. Yeah, I don't like naming albums. Yeah, naming albums is hard. <clears throat> I don't yeah. love that part. <laughs> but yeah, we'll definitely both be playing a lot of our new stuff, which will be cool. And a lot of the classics, too. And some great covers. It's going to be great. Yeah. I hope. 